Fellas, it's happening. The PTFS update has dropped and there's so much good loot in here. Five new aircraft, yeah, five. So I'm Vegetables fan and let's get started with the 707. So the 707 has been a highly suggested plane in the Suggestions channel and well, we got it. The base airliner 707 is a slim narrowbody fuselage low to the ground featuring a swift back wing with four tiny JT3D turbofan engines and a tail with this little tack on top. In the cockpit lies ancient gauges and I love these fire extinguishers for each engine in the middle console. There's even a flight engineer spot in the back with switches and clackers. Boeing's first jetliner has 14 liberties, all of them retrofied to fit the golden age of aviation, but I do have three favorites. We got the old Cafe Pacific livery with that dark green striping across the mid fuselage, and yes, the British flag on the plane. Then I have to give props to the Wantus V-Jet with the motto tattered all over the red tail, and I am a stickler for that red billboard tech. And finally, the elephant in the room, the Air Force One Liberty. Obviously, the iconic powder blue reigns supreme on the Sam 26000, but inside, large comp stations in the front, two meeting rooms in the back discussing world problems within the midst of the Cold War. For the little amount of space the 707 offers, I think this interior does a really good job of showcasing a former US president's use of transport within the 60s and 70s. Now, the 707 isn't actually finished yet. We got ourselves sub variants of the 707, all for military use. The E3 Century is one of them and I think by the use of this doppler radar on top it's even animated and it spins around and around and around which is a very nice touch. Now get hip to thighs. The interior holds many computer screens for the air force to monitor the skies for either enemy aircraft or weather or if they're sleepy just sleep in the racks. Next is the EC-18B and Ugh, what is that thing? Anyways, other than this fat troop snoop, this advanced range instrumentation aircraft was used for tracking space missions during NASA's little renaissance. The inside features rows of computer service accompanied with booths for comms. And finally, the Omega Tanker KC-707 with a rear tail drag that drops down gracefully for aerial refueling. Phew, uh, enough of the 707 for a second. Let's go ahead and move on to the second major addition, the C-17 Globemaster. This chunky boy has overhead wing with four massive Pride and Windy engines and a very large T-tail. Now inside, once this door opens, features a large cargo door with two rows of seats separate on each side. More on that later. And up these steep stairs is the cockpit with unique thrusters, this weird joystick, massive HD screens, and uh, whatever this is. Now the cool thing about the C-17 is this massive cargo door in the back. So if I go ahead and press the key behind Q, or on mobile, its specific button, we can see that the rear tail opens up either for loading or deloading or skydiving. So on that note, au revoir. There are seven liberties on the C-17. With the two notable ones I want to talk about is the Kuwaiti Air Force for not being all gray, and I do like the green and red hits, and the Qatari Emirati Air Force with as strange as it is, the Qatar Airways livery. I don't know really how to feel about this one, so, all right. But yeah, that is everything in this massive PTFS update. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe if you're new. Guys, enjoy the update. I'm Mr. Balls fan, and as always, take flight. See ya.